Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Back here in Detroit, Packers and Lions, and we say good afternoon to Aaron Andrews. Good afternoon, Kevin. Great job at the World Series, of course. But let's talk about this matchup. Fans outside the Packers building, they agree with our Greg Olson, saying, look, it's now or never for this group to get their team back on track. Inside the building, quarterback Aaron Rodgers telling us, I wouldn't phrase it that way, but I would say there's more urgency for us to snap this losing streak and put some wins together. His head coach, Matt LaFleur, is saying, his biggest focus this week was making sure his players' minds were right. He said, I don't want you to look at Detroit as just a one in six group. This is a team that plays hard under Dan Campbell. They're not going to just give up. LeFleur also saying to us, Kevin, look, our offense has struggled so much this year. It's more like, what can we do to get this thing back on track? Uh, you aren't kidding. It's looking like a different Packers offense. So strange with Aaron Rodgers at the controls. And we'll see him shortly, but Green Bay won the toss and they have deferred, so we'll get the Lions' explosive offense on the field first. And at home, they've been absolutely terrific. As Jared Goff warming up, ready to go, and so are we. Glad to have you aboard on a Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day in Detroit. Mason Crosby to kick it off. And here we go. Low sinking kick. Bobbled about down there, and now it's going to be picked up by Zilstra, who's got a nice little seam. And Brandon Zilstra, the up man, has great field position for the Lions. We go downstairs to Tom Rinaldi. Well, Kevin, it's been a tumultuous week, a week of change for the Lions. They fired their defensive backs coach, Aubrey Pleasant, and then traded away their leading receiver, tight end TJ Hawkinson of the Vikings. Speaking to Amon Ra St. Brown, he said there's no give up in this group. We're going to continue to fight. We have to find a way to get a win to help them. DeAndre Swift, their running back, was listed as questionable with ankle and shoulder injuries. He will be available but limited. They'll need him, guys, to try to end this streak. And look at this formation. They bring a jumbo lineman on Skipper. Now he moves. Now he's in motion. And they're going to run the football on first down on that right side. They've been a good running team as Jamal Williams has a carry. They, they, they have been, yes, a little up and down, but they have an explosive offense. They do. And, and when it's up, it's up, KB. I'll tell you, these guys are really dynamic. They're versatile. They have a nice complement in the backfield with the run play action. And they can push the ball downfield. I thought last week in the first half, Jared Goff played as well as we've seen him play for a few years. They just need to find a way to do that consistently throughout the game. Second down. Four-man rush time. Goff over the middle. Has a completion. That is his guy. Amin Ross St. Brown, who the second half last year turned into a terrific receiver, and he's their number one. He is their number one. It's a little unconventional from what we're used to across the league. We're used to that number one receiver playing out near the sidelines, you know, playing the traditional X receiver backside. But they can move Amon Ross St. Brown all over. You saw him there working in the slot. A little bit of a different number one than we're accustomed to, but the second-year player, he can do a lot. See, this season he's been banged up a little bit too. On first down, Williams going to get the carry. And a nice hole left side, and Williams is nearly 10 yards. The other thing about Detroit, and I know talking to you this week a lot, you feel like their offensive line is really good. I think their offensive line is the strength of the entire roster. But specifically here on offense, it gives offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, he gives, gives him a lot of opportunities. He doesn't have to be afraid to drop back. He can be really committed to the run game. They're good in the run. They're good in the pass. They're good in the play action. They're the core of what makes this offense work. Second and one. Give it to Jamal Williams, and the former Packer has a first down. So a good start to this drive for Detroit, moving the chains. And Greg talked about this in the open. First half last week, they were as good as any offense has been all year. I mean, they did whatever they wanted up and down the field. In the second half, not the same, but it, so many penalties and just mental mistakes. That's what it was. It was. It was penalties. It was mistakes. It was, you know, taking negative plays early in drives, which put them behind the chains. We've seen here their opening script when they're in rhythm and they're on schedule Ben Johnson does a nice job starting games. Here's Goff time again gets it to Swift in the flat speed DeAndre Swift making a move and all the way inside the 20 DeAndre Swift got right around Quay Walker and showed you that speed that he's got at a gain of 20. Yeah, and that's a positive sign You're gonna see me. He's gonna start in the backfield. and He's just gonna work on a swing left left swing route to the left 
Quay Walker, the rookie linebacker, is trying to chase inside out. Just can't quite catch him. They'll go quick here. They're going to give it up the middle. Swift again. Big room down to the 10. What an opening drive for Detroit. This is how they've done it at home all year long. And this is their strength. Jared Goff, his first quarter production, his first quarter efficiency in this Ben Johnson system is really, really good. It's the, the mystery they're trying to solve is how do we bottle this early fast start and keep and keep it going the whole time. You see Ben Johnson right there. He's op this opening script has been a strength of theirs all year. Second down. Goff looking to throw. Can't find his first read. Now going corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Just throwing it away. Brock Wright, the tight end, was the nearest lion close to that one. Meanwhile, this Packers defense, which was thought to be a dominant unit coming into the season, they've been fine, but they haven't been dominant. Yeah, they haven't been dominant, but you mentioned they have been fine. They've played well at times. They're just playing a little bit of a different style. They're not playing with a lead. They're not able to really concentrate on defending the pass. Have some vulnerabilities, especially stopping the run. But they have really talented players at all three levels that we're going to dive into as this game progresses. Third down and three. Give it up to Williams. And he's not going to get there. So now an early decision time on a fourth down and a yard. I almost feel like that call, he's telling himself, all right, we got two downs, right? We got four downs here to get this first. Just kind of going with a little inside zone there to make this a fourth and manageable. We saw Dan Campbell week 18 last year in this building against Green Bay. Obviously, just different circumstances, but he took a lot of chances. This is going to be his first one of the day. They go for it a lot. Nine of 20 on fourth down this year. Blitz coming. Goff gets rid of it. It is into the end zone and caught. Make it incomplete. Did not get there. Gary got the pressure. The Lions fail on fourth down. And the Packers make a stand. They looked for a second. It was going to get there. And Kennedy just couldn't get his hands on it. Packers football. Give Packers defensive coordinator Joe Barry credit. He brings a zero blitz. You're going to see they bring six guys. They have nobody off the edge for Gary. Kennedy's wide open. He's open. He just doesn't have the golf does not have the time. You see Rashawn Gary. He's unblocked unaccounted for Nice change of pace there by Joe Barry sell out go man across the board and bring one more rusher than Detroit can block And so the Packers will take over from the seven and here is Rodgers looking to sling it deep and fires one It's caught by Dobbs right across the middle. It's a good start for the Packers and a bullet from Aaron Rodgers pick up a quick 18 yards and you see the encouragement let's get going yeah and it's, that's a good that's a good early start you know we saw him last week we've seen him really all season struggle with this more intermediate and downfield passing game they think the world of Dobbs they think he's got a chance to be really good it's just a matter of how fast can they develop him to well, continue now, to take advantage of having him in this Rodgers era. Yeah, and after that, Dobbs limped off, and you see now down on one knee, so we'll keep an eye on that, see if he's okay. From the 25, another fake. Rodgers looking deep. It's double covered. He's got nothing. Christian Watson was running a deep route, but the Lions covered it well. But this is the last play. Dobbs, who just made that fine catch. Just seems like whether it's him or Christian Watson, they come into these games trying to get him going. We saw Watson leave early last week with the head injury. Nice to see him back out here today. They're real thin at wide receiver. They're young, they're inexperienced, and they're thin. You gotta hope Romeo Dobbs is all right. We'll see him back here again today. Yeah, Randall Cobb still out on the injured reserve with an ankle injury. So second down. Fake to Jones, another quick throw over the middle, knocked away, beautifully played that time. Deshaun Elliott, who was back after missing last week with a finger injury, brings up third and long. Yeah, this is a run play, and he can just throw it to Lazard. It's a little bit of an RPO, a little bit of a run solution. Instead of handing the ball off there to Aaron Jones. You see Rodgers, he thought he had a shot there. Those backers were so fast to go to the running back, Jones.
Third and long. Rodgers survey. Now pressure. Looking to run. He's got room. Rodgers going to have the first down. It's sliding out across the 40. Lions play a lot of man coverage, and that's why he had all that room to roam. That's exactly right, KB. But look at the two high safeties, and then everyone else here is in man. What happens when you play man? There's no middle linebacker in there to spy the quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, he might not run like he used to a few years ago, but he's still a threat to get out of the pocket. That front four needs to do a better job with their rush, rush lane discipline. You mentioned that man coverage makes it really hard when a quarterback can get out of the pocket. 34. Another quick throw going outside to Watkins who makes a catch and a stiff arm and a nice catch and run from Sammy Watkins who only had one catch last week so good to see him get involved early. Green Bay on the year averaging 18 points a game that's 26 in the league. It's almost hard to believe an offense with Aaron Rodgers is 26 in the league. Yeah, and I think right now they're trying to, they're at a little bit of an inflection point where they need to figure out what is their identity. We saw last week in the second half against Buffalo they really committed to the run game. They had some success there late. This is still an Aaron Rodgers-led offense. they got to find what is that blend between picking our chances in the passing game and being disciplined using these two great running backs. Second in the yard, the throw it again. Watkins dropped it. Packers have 18 drops on the year. It's fourth most in the league as this Lions defense that's been the real bugaboo for them. They come in last in the league in nearly everything. And the main reason is you see it there. They're young across the board. They're young, and they're young at all three levels. They have rookies starting for them, both up front, at linebacker, and in the secondary. They're young. They're inexperienced. Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator, he told us this week, he says, I love working with these young guys. I'm just trying to get them to understand there's got to be some urgency to develop quickly. Third and three inches, they give it A.J. Dillon, who's got it. They needed less than a length of the football, and that'll continue to drive for Green Bay. One thing they are doing is running the football. Now, it hasn't led to points, but they are gaining success on the ground. You know, in the loss to Buffalo, they ran for over 200 yards in that game. Yeah, the, the, the key, though, in the NFL to running the ball is you have to run the ball either within one score meaning you're you might be trailing but you're at least within scoring distance of, of taking the lead oh man you also have to find a chance that in the second half you have some you know you have some opportunities specifically in the passing game this Dobbs didn't look good as he's being helped off first and ten Jones stretch right cuts back Aaron Jones leaping over Lions and down inside the 40 Fifth in the NFL in rushing yards coming in. Also in yards per carry. And now John Runyon is down. He's the right guard for this offense. And some injury concerns for Green Bay early. Concern for Runyon here. We'll take a timeout. Scoreless in the first. As we have no score in the first quarter. Lions went all the way down the field on a fourth down and short. They got stopped at the seven. Green Bay has taken over. And they're on a nice little drive. Ninth play coming up. But issues with injuries already now you see Zach Tom in at right guard for John Runyon who went out and checked into the blue tent Packers have had all kinds of injury problems on the offensive line this year for six starting line combination second and one Dillon first down big hole and AJ Dillon still grinding inside the 35 as we go downstairs to EA well, I think Aaron Rodgers said it during our conference call with him about 12 times. We just need to get healthy. And right here on the first play of the game, Romeo Dobbs with a great catch. We saw him roll his ankle. There he is being carted off. I have to tell you guys, when he was in the blue tent, Packers head Dr. Pat McKenzie. He wasn't in there very long until he kind of came out with Romeo Dobbs' cleat. You have to imagine he's probably getting x-rays. And as you guys know, and you said it, uh, Josh Runyon in there in the blue tent getting checked out as well. My goodness. And there's Randall Cobb. He's been on injury reserve now for a few weeks with an ankle injury. So all kinds of injuries early for the Packers. First down, though, on a good opening drive as here's Aaron Jones. Gets a block from Jenkins on the left and then upended. Wow. Flipped over on that one. And we have our first game break of the day. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks so much, Kevin. Vikings, winners of five straight, taking on Washington. Kirk Cousins finds Justin Jefferson in the back of the end zone. Nine yards scored. Great catch. Vikings up 7-0. Kevin? 
One loss Minnesota Vikings with another injury Malcolm Rodriguez. Good looking rookie linebacker for the Lions was down as we look at the North standings Minnesota and remember they beat Green Bay in week one so they're feeling good right now. You see Rodriguez. Getting off under his own power. Oh. Yeah, a little friendly fire there. His right elbow, you see it kind of gets hyperextended. Kirby Joseph comes in to try to finish off that tackle and ended up getting his own guy. Second down and three on the fake. Here's Rodgers. Gets it out to Guara. Tries to make a cut, and Hutchinson comes back to hit him. And Guara is going to be short of a first down. It'll be a third down and about one as Lee McNeil came back to hit him. I just wanted to finish the thought on the Packers receivers. So obviously, Devontae Adams goes to the Raiders, right? Cobb's been hurt. Lazard's been hurt. Watson has been hurt. Rookie. Dobbs just gets hurt. Watt, I mean, they haven't had any consistency there. Yeah, and there's been moving parts all around Rodgers, both up front. We've already seen Runyon go out. There's been David Bakhtiari. Wait, Tom's in the last three weeks has played left tackle, left guard last week for Elton Jenkins, and now he's in early in this game at right guard. There's very little continuity at wide receiver, as you mentioned, or up front with the offensive line. Third and one, A.J. Dillon has a fullback. Rodgers rolling, looking, surveying, throws, caught! Inside the 10, it's the big guy, Mercedes Lewis, and his first and goal. Look at you, you love it. I love it. You know why I love it? Because Mercedes Lewis, he gets asked to do all the dirty work. They don't throw him a ton of passes. This is just a simple play-action boot. He's going to just keep coming with his quarterback. Rodgers gave a nice little fist pump. They have a great relationship. Rodgers just raves about what he brings, his presence in the locker room. You see it there. He doesn't get a lot of passes. He doesn't get a lot of targets. And when so, he does, they love it. It's only a second catch of the year. Yeah. Long drive. Play number 13. Fake. Rodgers. Ball is tipped in the air. It is picked off. That was a fight for the ball. Looked like the Lions had it with Kirby Joseph, and he does. Ball was deflected, and Joseph, the rookie, has the interception. His first as a pro. First ball, first down. You see, he just throws it right off the Lions defender's helmet. He's got a little, wi a little window in there. Wow, what a break. Each team drives down the field and each team gets stopped. Lions football. And had a wide open receiver. Greg will show you, but unfortunately, Rodgers hit Barnes in the face. It deflected up in the air. And then Kirby Joseph picked it off, his first NFL interception. So each team drove all the way down the field and got stopped inside the 10. And so now it's the Lions back on offense with Williams uh, juking around Adrian Amos to pick up a positive gain. So what happened there, Greg? He's trying to throw the ball to Alan Lazard right in this window. Again, it's a run-action RPO, but take a look at Barnes. He comes up to fit the run, and as you mentioned it, Rodgers just hits him dead in the face with the ball. He doesn't see him in that window. Lazard's open, right? That's why Rodgers pulls that ball to put it on him on that little quick slant. Sometimes just bad luck. Bad things sometimes happen. Meanwhile, another injury as we look at that is Eric Stokes, the cornerback for Green Bay, is down, and Rodgers... Not thrilled. Starting cornerback for Green Bay goes in the tent, and now the replacement, Keyshawn Nixon. And the Lions see if they can take advantage. Craig Reynolds in the game. Stokes looked at that replay, did not look pretty, so we decided not to show it. Here's Goff throwing in the flat. Penalty flag flies as Reynolds makes the catch. I mean, so Green Bay has had three guys taken off the field already. Starting right guard. Starting wide receiver and the starting cornerback. We saw Rodriguez hurt. Offense, number 68. 10 yard penalty, second down. That is on Taylor Decker, the left tackle. So it's been a uh, little bit of a frenetic start. It has. It feels like every. Just everything that can go wrong from the injury front for Green Bay these last few weeks has continued to go wrong. They feel confident that as they get guys back, maybe that's going to be the juice that turns their year around. And early in this game, we've seen them lose three prominent players. Here's Goff back to throw, has some time, looking tipped away, and that is nearly intercepted. Amos had a chance at it. 
Swift got his hand on it. Third and long. I think Goff's expecting Swift to come out of this break. Take a look at, you're going to see him, he's going to line up back here and he's going to run a little sit route. But take a look in the inside of the field. Goff's expecting him to run inside. He kind of comes out of his break. You can see Goff kind of pulls it back. That's why that ball sailed and was a little off target. Swift's got to feel that space inside, break in, be friendly. Goff hits him. There's a lot of room to run after the catch. Third and 17. Four man rush. They're just going to set up a screen. It's tipped in the air, and that is incomplete. My goodness. Preston Smith got it. He almost had a chance to intercept it. Yeah, you mentioned it. Gary and Pre Sean Gary and Preston Smith, they ran into each other. What a great job there by Preston Smith. Now take a look. Oh, it's like a PBU, but on your own teammate. Like you're exactly right. A great awareness there by Preston Smith. Sometimes those defenders, they feel the tight ends a little light in his block. They're trying to set up that screen. They just clamp on and react. Great awareness by Preston Smith and really close to another big turnover. I think I've seen more balls batted in the air than completed passes the first quarter. Wild. There's the punt. Rodgers is back deep. Has some room. If he likes up the middle. Into Lions territory. Green Bay has good field position. We come back. 322 to go in the first quarter from Detroit. Rodgers back on the field. What's going on right here? Yeah, we, we mentioned on, on Swift on that little incomplete pass that Goff kind of overthrew him. I think Swift is going to his quarterback saying, you know what? My bad, man. I should have run out of it. I should have given you a better target. Sometimes there's just slight miscommunication. The key as a receiver is you want to see the defense through the same eyes as the quarterback. In that case, Goff and Swift are on two separate pages. All right, so Packers have good field position. Good news for Detroit. Malcolm Rodriguez, a rookie linebacker who went off the field last drive, looked like an elbow, back on the field right now. The Packers will start with a run to Aaron Jones, who doesn't get much as we go downstairs to Aaron. Well, Kev, we, we know it talking to Aaron Rodgers this week. You see it right here, the pictures we are going to show you right now. He's a frustrated guy. Obviously, he mentioned to us the health of this team. He's got young wide receivers that need to grow up very, very fast. He told us flat out this week, I just want to go down swinging. I want to throw it. In order to win, we have to push the ball down the field. You see it all over his face when he's coming over to Matt LaFleur and showing that frustration. This is a guy, as you said it perfectly in the break, it's one of the greatest to ever play the game, and he wants it on his shoulders. And like any other great play, it's like a home run hitter has to hit singles, right? Here's Rodgers on a play pass. Pressure, steps away, in trouble, flag flies, incomplete. All kinds of stuff going on there, and at the end of the day, it might be a hold on Green Bay. Yeah, Trey Blake's going to tell us it will be moving back. Holding offense, number 69. Ten yard penalty, second down. Playoff, what Aaron told us, uh, uh, what everyone's talking about there. Aaron Jones told us this week, David Bakhtiara has told the team in meetings, we cannot waste a Hall of Fame career right here. It's It's been talked about with the team. And, and I think the fact that it's been so communicated so openly is, is a positive sign. The players, the coaches, everyone in the building understands just how special these next few years are, these next few weeks of this season are when you have a guy like Aaron Rodgers. And they understand there is an urgency. There isn't, you know, we got to get the young guys going. We got to get this team galvanized to save this season because the reality is here in Green Bay, you don't know how many you have left with number 12 playing quarterback. Play clock winding down. Do they get it off? They do. Rodgers pumps, looks over the middle, has a completion. It's Dylan into Lions territory. And back near the original line of scrimmage. And there's Rodriguez, the rookie on the tackle. Packers this year. I mean, look, they were one of the cleanest teams in the game in previous years in terms of no turnovers, no drops, no penalties. It's the opposite this year. That's a big reason why they're struggling. Third and ten here. And now some more of that frustration as Rodgers calls a timeout. 
Well, if you're not playing Fox Super 6, you're missing out on a chance to win $100,000 of Terry's money today. Grab your phone, download the free Super 6 app now, enter your six picks in the NFL Sunday Challenge Contest. Six correct picks puts Terry's money in your pocket. Motions are high right now. Packers have lost four in a row. They know they've got to have it, and it's been an uneven start. Yeah, they got to find a way to just settle down. The defense has played pretty well. They were able to hold strong and stop them on the fourth down on the opening drive. Nice three and out in the last possession. But offensively, they've got to settle in. They've got to find some continuity. They've got to find a target or two that they can just settle in and go down and get some points on the board. Third and long, Rodgers floats one for Lazard. He's got it, still on his feet. Lazard makes a move, diving for the end zone. He is going to be waiting for a signal. <laughs> There's no signal. Still have not seen a signal. Lazard thinks he's in. They're discussing. There's still no signal. I mean, no, there's nothing. nothing been called on the field yet. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down prior to crossing the goal line. The Green Bay's ball on the one-yard line. All right. Well, there we go. Nonetheless, a huge gain. 47. A, a great throw and a great catch by Alan Lazard. They call this a big box fade. You run a wide go route from the inside. Rodgers purposely underthrows the ball to give him. Watch, you can see Lazard. He's able to come back through the defender and catch that ball. And let's take a look here down at the end. He gets a great block there by Christian Watson. Yeah, his right knee goes down. We'll get a great angle, great look at it here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the right call is right knee down. But, man, we just said they needed someone to make a play. Well, right on cue on a third and long, Aaron Rodgers goes to the one guy he probably has the most confidence in to make a play. And that's Alan Lazard. Yeah, 47 yards to Lazard, so it sets up a first and goal. It was so bizarre, though, because no one signaled anything, so we're all kind of like, whoa. Yeah, and the ball was bouncing around, so he, did he fumble? Was it recovered for a touchback? That was crazy, but when the dust settles, it's first and goal. Three tight ends, Green Bay. He'll run it to Dylan. Doesn't get there. Kirby Joseph had the interception before was there on the tackle. It'll be a second down and goal. Another one of those areas down for the Packers this year, red zone. 59% of the time they score a touchdown, it's 13th in the league. Expect better with them. So much of red zone offense is timing and spacing, and we've talked about it a lot to start this game. A lot of guys in and out of the lineup can have an effect on it. Rodgers throwing a fade, and Watkins runs a different route. That's a, that's a perfect example. That's it right there. That's a run play. He knows he has Sammy Watkins there on the left on an alert tag, and Sammy Watkins runs a little dart route, a little slant, and Aaron Rodgers throws the back pylon fade. You don't expect to see that from no. a veteran receiver. No, it's what we're talking about, though. It's, it's, it's so hard. Even if guys have played a lot of football, they haven't played a lot of football here. They haven't played a lot of football with Aaron Rodgers, and we've just seen time and time again which was Aaron Rodgers and these guys not on the same page. Third and goal. Dylan gets it. He is stuffed. Oh, big play by Detroit. Barnes was there initially, and now what do you do? Oh, two drives in a row. Barnes is making his presence felt. He's unblocked. He's taking on one of the most physical running backs. A.J. Dillon, one of the most physical running backs in the entire league. Saw Barnes's kind of helmet lead to the pick on the previous drive, and wow, that is a clinic form tackle by Derek Barnes. Packers going to go fourth and goal. And they'll wait to the second quarter to do it, to talk it over. Wow. Will the Lions be able to make a stand here after one scoreless from Detroit?
14th time the Packers have been shut out in the first quarter since 2021. That's almost hard to believe. Casey Garland coming up with a gem. So, we start the second quarter scoreless. Fourth and goal, Green Bay. Inside the two. We just brought in Aaron Jones, took out A.J. Dillon. It was kind of a late sub to the huddle. We'll see what they have in store here. Rodgers comes back the other way. It's intercepted. He was looking for Bakhtiari, but Aiden Hutchinson, the first round draft pick, has a pick. Well, Green Bay had a play for this situation, but Aiden Hutchinson, what an unbelievable play. The awareness of the young rookie. Bakhtiari's eligible. You can see he's off the ball. That makes Bakhtiari, he reported eligible during the timeout. They're trying to catch him off guard. Aiden Hutchinson was having none of it. All the action was going away. Just a great job picking that ball off. That's really impressive for a young kid to understand the situation, realize Bakhtiari's eligible, and react when Rodgers tries to throw back. That's a great reaction. That's really a good reaction. Look at Aaron Glenn. His defense has had some hard times. And Hutchinson, the number two overall pick, reacts, saw the trick play, and has his first NFL interception. Wild stuff here in Detroit so far. They'll try to get it to Williams. So two rookies. Talk about the young rookies for Aaron Glenn's defense. Joseph and Hutchinson both have interceptions. And now Rodgers. I'm not sure who he can get on the other end to change the way the offense is going right now. It's just, I mean, I don't know how many more ways we can say it. It's just so uncharacteristic of what we've seen in this Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers era in Green Bay. It's just, I don't know if anyone saw this coming. Justin Jackson in the game for the first time today. They'll pitch it to him. Cuts back. And Jackson gets tripped up by Keyshawn Nixon. Remember, he's in there for Eric Stokes. Going to pick up four. Third and four, and penalty flag. Going to make it third and nine. Full start, offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, the Lions at home this year, we talked about their offense being explosive. At home, they've been unbelievable. I mean, look at those numbers here at home. They had the great opening drive, were stopped on fourth and short from the seven, and now the penalty is kind of stuttered a little bit. Yeah, in this next quarter or two, this this is the critical middle time of the game where the Lions just haven't seemed to get out of their own way. And, you know, that early magic they had through the first four weeks of the season, leading the league in points. They seem to lose their way here, second, third quarter. Blitz coming, quick pass, Lions get rid of it. Khalif Raymond surging forward, he's right at the sticks. And we'll see where they spot it, that's going to be the key. Rudy Ford made a nice form tackle. And looks like he's got the first down. Really nice play call there. Just get the ball in the hands of the receiver early. Let's see if he can get right to that white line. Nice physical tackle. I think it's the right call. I think it's a really good call. Nice physical tackle, but good physical run. Mike Pereira checks in, says he likes the call as well. So the Lions pick up a third and long. On the fake, blitz coming. Goff in trouble, rolls out, looks, throws on the run. It's caught. Amin Ra still on his feet and a first down for the Lions. Amin Ra, St. Brown open again. They got 15 more. Take a look right here, Jackson. He's going to see this pressure off the slot. This is what gives Goff the time. What a great job there. Justin Jackson, you mentioned coming in for the first time this drive. Great blitz pickup. Goff has time to extend the play. 
former Charger will get it here, sprinting up the middle in a nice hole, and Jackson taking advantage to pick up five yards. Interesting watching that play, too. Dan Campbell, what they said, what they've been working on with Goff is climbing the pocket. Said when he's good, he does that well. And what that means is, that's a great point, what that means is as the pressure's coming in around him, he has a tendency of falling backwards, away from the line, which actually makes it more difficult for your linemen to run those guys by you. They want him to climb the pocket, move towards the line of scrimmage, Make, allow your offensive lineman to push those rushers wide. Here's Swift, right side, cuts through and then tripped up in a penalty flag as well. Rasul Douglas, I think, got a hand on him. Now let's we'll see what the flag is. Holding, offense, number 85. 10-yard penalty, second down. It's on Tom Kennedy, the wideout. Anytime you're out here in space, he just kind of overruns him. You can see he wraps that left arm around his jersey. Sometimes those blocks out in space that they ask the receivers, they're either crack backs or you're kind of going back towards the ball. Those defensive backs are so athletic, they're moving. You got to keep your hands in tight and move your feet. You don't have to kill the guy. It's not a knockout shot. You kind of have to dance with him. You get your arms and hands extended from your body. Pretty easy call. Yeah, Kennedy getting some more time today. Josh Reynolds is out with a back injury for the Lions. He's their number two wide receiver. Second and long. Goff to throw. Coming near side. Has a catch again. It's Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, it's interesting, too. The Lions telling you they're playing without Josh Reynolds. Well, they're also playing without T.J. Hawkinson, who they traded during the week, because one of their best players, the tight end, who they took eighth overall a few years ago. And so, you know, a little different feel offensively. You're number two wide out out and your star tight end gone. Yeah, and that's a lot of production. That's a lot of production they're going to have to get. They're not going to get it from any one particular player. They're going to have to get it from a collection of guys, as you mentioned. Going to run it here and going to come up a little bit short. I wonder if they're thinking about going again. That was Williams. Interesting call. No, they're going to punt it away. Yeah, I guess they, they were... I think Green Bay was in a real light box there. They only had a six-man box, meaning six players within the tackle box there. And thinking they saw something there with the handoff, but couldn't quite break through. And but again, it's penalties. It's overcoming penalties for this Lions offense. They have, and they're on schedule, and they're playing in front of the chains. They're pretty good, and it just seems like every drive here they've got to overcome themselves. Jack Fox, Pro Bowler in 2020. End over end. Rodgers gets out of the way. And a Detroit bounce. And a, oh, they let it go. And they're going to save it instead at the one. Worked out. Anthony Pittman, right place, right time. And Green Bay's got to go 99 yards. Scoreless in Detroit. 10.04 to go, first half. More for Aaron Rodgers trying to get this thing going. Injuries for the Packers today, a big story. Romeo Dobbs on the first offensive play for him. Got hurt, and he's down. And then starting cornerback Eric Stokes out with an ankle and a knee injury. So John Runyon, the right guard, get hurt early as well. But he's just back on the field for the first time. So that's good news as the starting right guard is back out there. What's not good news for the Packers is their offense continues to sputter. Rodgers has two interceptions today. They wasted a first and goal from the two last drive. Here they start from the one. Rodgers floating far side of the field. Lazard up and at it. No, he did not come down inbounds. Jerry Jacobs on the coverage. And for Detroit, good work. Jacobs back here. And then they, they really like coming back from an ACL injury. Yeah, and Dan Campbell told us that he's excited to get him worked back in. You saw him do a nice job there. I think even if Lazard caught that ball, he was going to land out of bounds. He got up right in his face. Press coverage, man. Forced the receiver real wide. Make that throwing zone as small as possible. Dylan. Fighting for every last yard. He's going to get across the five, bring up third down. Well, interesting today for Green Bay. Their offensive coordinator, Adam Stenovich, is now upstairs. First year offensive coordinator, fourth year in Green Bay. No real reason given for the switch, but I wonder if just trying to change the look up. I think so. I think maybe Matt LaFleur, Rodgers, Stenovich kind of get together during the week and say, hey, what? We just need a spark. We need something new, a new perspective, a new set of eyes. 
putting Stenovic up in the box. A different view of the game, a different perspective. Maybe get him removed from the well, intense sideline interactions, the drama of the sideline. We'll see if it can be that spark. Third and five. Rodgers quick throw. Watson has it. Looks for a block. Stays in and has a first down. Nice play by Christian Watson, who's had all kinds of little injuries this year. He's had a hard time staying on the field. But that's a good one to keep the drive going and get out of the own end zone there. It is. And this is just the design they call them run solutions, meaning we don't want to hand this ball off. They have too many defenders in the box to block. We're just going to throw it out to Watson. Really nice job. These are the little things that Rodgers is looking for out of Dobbs, out of Watson, some of his rookies. Just pay attention to the details of every little play. It's a small little flat route, but you convert the third down. Dylan, lead block to Guar, and it's a good run for Dylan, who's up near the 19. Well, in two weeks now, the biggest sporting event in the world kicks off on Fox. U.S. men's team returning to the World Cup for the first time in eight years, and you could win $1 million. Just fill out your World Cup bracket at foxsports.com backslash bracket. You can play it for free. Well, it's coming up just two weeks away. Packers going to go fast here. Speed up the tempo a little bit. Second and three. Pressure. Rodgers steps away, throwing on the run, has a man, it is caught, DeGuara, the tight end. Rodgers moving up, throwing on the run, and DeGuara will move the chains. Nice job here, there's nothing open, they just play a soft zone, he buys some time. DeGuara just sees his quarterback scramble, just finds that little hole shot. Take a look at the corner on the top of the screen, he sees Rodgers go, see him just settle? That's what creates that little pocket. Right in front of Elliott, the safety coming over. That little pocket there on the sideline in the scramble drill. Nice job by DeGuara just being friendly and settling in that open space. Aaron Jones, fourth carry of the day. And Jones up to the 48. Now Rodgers, it's been a little... Uncharacteristic for him today, too. It's the first time he's ever thrown two red zone interceptions in a game. First time ever. Yeah, it's just, I mean, that one's a little bit of bad luck. This one's just a great play by the rookie Hutchinson. He feels that he's eligible. He feels something's off there. Bakhtiari releases on the little trick play throwback. But yeah, just out of sync. They've moved the ball well. I mean, they've moved the ball up and down, but... Just, you don't typically see these struggles in the red zone, let alone the turnovers. Aaron Jones has been quiet. Four carries, 23 yards, but only those touches. But they get it to him again here. Looks to cut back. He's got nothing. Lions played it well, and here comes third down. You've got to be really impressed with everything you heard Tom mention at the start of the show with the turmoil, them firing their defensive backs coach, Aubrey Pleasant. You know, Aaron Glenn's trying to kind of galvanize this young group. They're much maligned. They have played hard. Opportunistic, giving up some yards. Tell you what, Dan Campbell's group always plays hard. That's, that's the first step of turning things around, is building that competitive culture. Third and seven. Blitz coming. Rodgers gets rid of it. Lazard spins and has a first down. Well, that's been the that's been the guy that Rogers is going to today when things get tough. Yeah, when, when when he needs a play, Lazard is the guy. He trusts his body language. He trusts he trusts his feel on these routes. This is just a soft little off coverage man. Knows where the sticks are. You know, every quarterback in the league they know when things are hard. Where do I turn to? Where's my most trusted target? Right now, it's got to be Alan Lazard. He has to be the guy to carry this group especially with Randall Cobb, their other veteran wide receiver, out due to injury. Dylan. Nothing there. It's another rookie, Josh Paschal, who was in on the stop. They're just rookies everywhere for Detroit. And you know what? A lot of them have made some big plays today. They have. They have, and they've got a couple at every level. They have a nice core to build around, but they need some success, right? They need to find a way to have some production. 
and turn some of these tough numbers that they're facing defensively, turn them around, especially in the passing game. That's really been where they've struggled. That's crazy. Green Bay has 199 yards. I mean, they have moved the ball. They just can't score. Obviously, the interception's a factor in that. Second down on the fake. Rodgers steps back. Can't find anyone, and now he's going to be sacked for a big loss. Another big play from Derek Barnes. He's had a huge impact in this game. Derek Barnes is making his presence felt. Take a look here at Lazard. He's going to take the post. There's some space back there. Him and Robert Tunney, the tight end, kind of in the same spot. Not exactly sure, but watch 55 Barnes just work through contact. He's getting chipped. He's getting hit. He's made three huge, huge plays already in this first half. Third and 18. Get a quick hitter to Jones over the middle. Jones surging forward, and he's not going to get there, but he certainly makes it interesting now for Green Bay. It's going to be a fourth down and three after he picked up 16, and Rodgers isn't going anywhere. No, I think this is a no-brainer. That, that whole purpose of that last play is to see how much of it can we get. Can we put ourselves at least to have a decision to go for it on fourth down? Really well execu executed little tunnel screen to Jones. Makes it a no-brainer here, right on kind of the fringe of field goal range. And a timeout as the play clock was winding down. And we will be right back after this message from Progressive. Why is it looking at? Well, I'm not a cat expert because we don't have a cat. I'm telling you that I shut the slider last night. Are you sure about that? I closed it. Why don't we check the replay? That is very aggressive. I don't think. This What Really Happened replay is brought to you by Progressive. One thing no one would challenge, saving money when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Uh, yeah, that does look like me. Hmm. That's because it is you. That's pretty good. <laughs> so good. I like that. All right, fourth and three. Green Bay's had a 13-play drive. They failed to score. This is the 12th play of this drive, and now it's fourth and three. Scoreless game, 2.39 to go in this first half from Detroit. Prior to Aaron Rodgers taking that last time out, Detroit was lined up in press man all the way across the board, up, challenging these Green Bay receivers. Do they stick with it? Looks like they will. You're going to see Anzalone, the linebacker, out here on Aaron Jones. That's typically a man tell. Rodgers looking right at it. Now goes the other way. Rodgers going deep down the field. Lazard. Oh, he made the catch. Tight coverage. Lazard got it away from Will Harris to haul it in. And a first down for Green Bay. It's the exact same route, same concept. We saw Lazard take down inside the one on the previous possession. He's just given his best player, his best weapon right now in this system is Alan Lazard. He's just given him a chance to compete. Oh, oh I think that ball hits the ground. Oh, they're going fast. Oh, they challenged it. Yeah. Dan Campbell's got the challenge flag. I think that ball hit the ground, KB. Yeah, I agree. Let's bring in Mike Prayer from L.A. Mike, that last replay was telling. What did you see? Yeah, it's the, the fact that he's going to the ground. He's got to survive the ground and hold on to the ball. It certainly seems to me that when he hits the ground, the ball pops and moves. And I, Well, that's what they'll look at to see if that's considered loss of control or just movement. But I think it's incomplete. Wow. Look like an amazing catch on what was great coverage by Will Harris, but now we'll take a look. Maybe overturned back after this. Fries. Well, they have overturned this call, as Mike Pereira said they would, and Mike was exactly right. This boy has to finish the catch. He does not. So uh, that was fourth down, and Detroit takes over, and the coverage was brilliant. Really nice job. Will Harris, you can see him working here in the slot. The best thing, look at his left hand. The way he just rakes down, he pulls Lazard's left hand off the ball, and it's just enough to get that ball incomplete. Goff, pressure coming from Gary, gets rid of it. Kennedy makes a move up across midfield, and in the Packers territory, and then a thrown out of bounds way late by Jair Alexander. That's just a silly penalty. It's going to be 15 more for the Lions. 
Yeah, that's just a frustration penalty. We saw a couple of these last week in their game against Buffalo. Just a lot of emotion, a lot of frustration. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 23. 15 yard penalty, automatic first half. I mean, that wasn't even close. Yeah, last week from the opening, you know, opening quarter of the game against Buffalo. Alexander, Stefan Diggs just constantly going at each other. I understand the competitive spirit, right? You don't want to back down. You're a top-tier cover corner. But sometimes you just need to take a step back and just settle in. Let the game come to you because you end up losing your control a little bit, using your emotions, and cost your team 15 yards. Going to run it. Jackson. And chugging his way down to the 25. He's going to pick up five. Actually, it was Williams down to the 25 and that takes us to the two minute warning lions on the move scoreless game the frustrated packers team trying to figure it out half time we've got the class of 2021 quarterbacks in the spotlight trevor lawrence justin fields zach wilson and matt jones each looking to win at home highlights coming up at the half looking good kurt can't wait to hear about it as we've got two minutes left here before that halftime show, scoreless game. It's been a little bit of a disjointed half. Frustration for the Packers. Lions defense has made some really good plays today. And now Detroit's offense on the move, thanks in part to a 15-yard penalty on Jair Alexander. Got all three timeouts left. And a second down and five here. Bring out a jumbo formation with an extra lineman. Going to run it. Williams cuts up the middle. And Jamal Williams has a first down. I think how Detroit handles this final two minutes here. You see him going up tempo. That first down was critical. You don't want to give Aaron Rodgers the ball back with any time. So the opportunity to milk this clock. Understand you still have three timeouts if you need to stop it. They'll run it again. Williams sprinting up the middle. So why go up tempo if you don't want to give the Packers the ball back? Because I think they like the personnel group that they had. They had. You mentioned they had that jumbo tackle in there. So coming out of the two-minute break, Green Bay matches it. So you don't sub. Don't give Green Bay a chance to get different personnel on the field. Time right now is of no importance to Detroit. They're not in a time crunch. They're not against the clock. Run this thing down. Make sure when you score, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, that's the end of the half. Minute left in the half. Williams again. And Jamal Williams, nothing there. Maybe a yard, but that's it. It's going to bring up third down as Isaiah McDuffie, who's playing a lot today for the injured Devondre Campbell. And now a timeout on the field, as we'll be right back after this message from State Farm. Hey, Jake from State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So how's this for personal? I draw mustaches on players' faces when they're asleep. Hmm. Coach Reed, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It helps you create an affordable price just for you. Oh, Coach, it happened again. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Coach Reed is turning into full-fledged actor mode. It's... It's tremendous. Third and four Lions, 50 seconds left. The Packers called their final timeout to try and get the ball back here. So what does Detroit pull out of the bag on this one? DeAndre Swift in the game and running back. Goff, throw to the middle, complete, caught. First down and down to the one is Swift. First and goal, Lions. This is an unbelievable catch. I hope people appreciate just how hard this catch is. He's running full speed on this little inside break. Watch him reach behind him and just hands catch this behind him. Oh, that's a running back. That is an unbelievable catch on third down by DeAndre Swift. And the Lions have called their first time out with 27 seconds to go and talk things over well there's a couple ways to look at this game if you're a packers fan you're ultimately frustrated like green bay is but detroit they've been in these situations before they just haven't finished but you have to be impressed with their effort today absolutely they're playing hard and they're making the critical plays yeah. right they're getting the turnovers they're getting the red zone stops so they they're not going to go play for play and match them they're not going to have the same amount of yards necessarily as rogers but 
Tell you what, they're coming up big when they need to. None bigger right now in the first half than that third down catch by Swift. Williams is the back. They go jumbo formation. First and goal. 28 seconds left in the half. It's Jamal Williams not going to get there. Rashawn Gary came up to make the stop. And now Lions will use another timeout. So they've got one left. They could do whatever they want here with 19 seconds to go. Well, low scoring games in the NFL this year. You're, you're wondering where have all the points gone? Because you look at the ranks around the league. Fewest combined points since 2017. Total touchdowns the fewest and touchdown passes. And you know what? We haven't had a single point today. So I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> and I'll tell you, based on how this game has gone, the ball's on the one yard line. There's no telling what's about to happen here. And there hasn't been a scoreless tie at halftime this year, Greg, so we're trying to make history. Hey. We're trying to give it to Kurt, and make a little history, let him riff on it, enjoy it. We're just the men for the job, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I, I did see a no-hitter in the World Series the other day, so this is kind of similar in a way. Second and goal. On the fake. Goff looking. That's a man wide open. It's caught for the touchdown. Shane Zilstra, his first career touchdown. This is every tight end's dream. When you go to goal line, you want this play. You're going to block, you're going to block, and you're just going to kind of get lost and go downstream. Unbelievable. That's when you would show, KB, when I would show up to red zone or goal line meeting, like every week you prayed. That play was going to be in because it's a guaranteed touchdown for that front side tight end. Shane Zilstra, heck of a way to catch your first career touchdown. That was pretty cool. I mean, practice squad call up, playing with his brother today. Low snap, and that kick is no good. I think Alexander came in and got a piece of it, too. And there's a flag on the play, so hang on. Let's see what the deal is here. There was contact with the kicker, but the ball was deflected. Unless they're saying he got a quick jump. Let's see what he says. Well, he's coming over to talk to Dan Campbell. So there's, it could be, if it's on Green Bay, they might go for two here. Maybe Alexander jumped early. Did he not touch the ball? Defense, number 28. The offense is elected to go for a two-point try. The try will be moved from the two to the one-yard line. Yeah, the ball was... It looked live, KB, like the ball was deflected. But I don't think it was. No. So he obviously there hits Spagley in the leg. By the this way. This is smart. Now they get started to interrupt it. Now they're going to get a chance to go for two here because the ball, instead of being at the two-yard line, is half the distance at the one. I love this. Can we just appreciate how good that hold was by Jack Fox? Wow. Just for a second. Looked like a first baseman picking it off the dirt. And to your point, they will take that and go for two. By the way, the no-hitter is over. Someone someone got a hit up the middle. I don't know if you noticed. I noticed. That's it. And now they're looking at it upstairs just to see if there was contact with the football with Alexander, I'm assuming, because if there is, that would negate the penalty. Yeah, this angle here is really clear. There's no contact on the ball. I think live, we all assumed when the ball was kind of pulled left, now Alexander got his hands on it, but I think it's pretty obvious that he didn't. Yeah, so they take a look at this, and we wait on a two-point try, we think. Look one more time from this angle. Back after this. Well, the Lions finally broke this shutout, and they haven't scored since the first half of last week until now. Shane Zilstra, a one-yard touchdown, but then extra point. It was a bad snap that was held, and then Jair Alexander running into the kicker. So they've decided to go for two. They upheld the call upon review, and they will give it to Williams. Running in for the two-point conversion. Eight-nothing Lions. Watch Taylor Decker, the left tackle. Watch the job he does sealing and getting up on the linebacker. That's what creates the hole for Williams. Seal, 
pin Quay Walker right there, and look, that's the alley. Really well blocked. Taylor Deckel, the left tackler, critical to that play. Well, let's go back to this play as we bring in Mike Pereira. Mike, did the Lions get a little bit of a gift here? Well, not really, because what they were looking at in replay was whether or not actually Alexander touched the ball, because if he actually touched the kick and then ran, ran into the kicker, then it would not be a foul. So that, and also the ball skipped into the holder. If it was the kicker that possessed the ball after the ball skipped in, then you wouldn't have a foul either. But in this case, they just made sure that they had it right on the field, which they did. Oh, got it. Interesting. So, because, you know, Fox with that hole kind of made that stand up. And they take advantage. They get the two-point conversion. And it's 8 nothing with 15 seconds to go in this half. And, boy, is it going to be an interesting halftime locker room for the Packers. Because they have lost four in a row. And, Greg, to start this show today, you said this is the Packers' season today. They don't look like a team that's playing for their season. They don't. And we've seen emotions run high. And, and I understand that. I've been a part of tough stretches. I've been a part of periods of seasons where it doesn't feel like you can get anything going. But they need to collect themselves. The leaders of this team, offensively, defensively, need to galvanize this group at halftime and say, hey, guys, this second half, this is going to dictate what we play for the rest of the season. So they got to figure it out here going into halftime. Meanwhile, the Lions, much maligned defense, pitching a shutout at the half. Aaron Glenn has these young troops firing on all cylinders, and so it's 8-zip Detroit at the break. And the Packers, second time shut out in the first half this year. Week one in Minnesota, same thing, and there's some chatter going on right there. Well, this is going to be some second half, I know that. The Verizon Halftime Show comes your way next with Kurt and the guys. 8-0 Detroit at the break. The game without the consent of NFL Productions is prohibited. Just hits him dead in the face with the ball. Oh, big play by Detroit. The frustrated Packers team trying to figure it out. And wide open, it's caught for the touchdown. This is every tight end's dream. And today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. 8 nothing Lions at the half. Green Bay gets the ball to start the third quarter. And welcome to the broadcast booth. He's Greg Olson. I'm Kevin Burkhart. Well, Green Bay has a half to maybe turn around their season. You said at the beginning this was this was the most important thing for them. This is their season on the line. They haven't played like it in the first half. Yeah, and, and at this point, there's no scheme. There's no magic play. There's no magic X's and O drawed up. This is about the guys in the locker room, the coaches coming together and say, hey, settle in. We've got great leadership on this team, both sides of the ball. Those leaders now need to lead. They need to send the message to these guys that this is not our expectation. This is not the standard we expect here in Green Bay and as you mentioned they've got a half to get it right meanwhile the Lions scoring on a late drive at the end of that first half with 15 seconds left on a touchdown to Shane Zilstra and the Packers going to take it on out here with Nixon and has some room. Good speed for Nixon is out across the 30 as we go downstairs to EA. Well, let's get an injury update for you first, Kevin. Wide receiver Romeo Dobbs, he is out of this game with an ankle injury. We saw him go down in the very first play of this game. As for his head coach, Matt LaFleur, I just asked simply, what was your message? And he said, I told the entire team. A lot like what you said, Kevin. We have 30 minutes left. 30 minutes to turn this around and he said to be honest I like the way both sides of the ball were playing it was just those two turnovers that killed us in the red zone we've got to finish drives and I said what else can you do here on offense well we're about to find out there as Aaron Jones gets the ball go ahead there mentioned to him what else can you do on offense you guys are being aggressive you're going for it on fourth down you're moving the ball well he just looked at me and Ke Kevin he said someone needs to step up and make a play, and then he ran off. Uh, it's, and now the question is who, right? Meanwhile, some news offensively. David Bakhtiari is not in at left tackle to start this second half. Zach Tom is. So another change on the offensive line for Green Bay. Here's Rodgers, back to throw, can't find anyone and throws it away as we go downstairs to Tom. 
Well, Kevin, talking to Dan Campbell coming out at half, asking him about the decision to go for two points at the end of the first half. He said it was very easy. Anytime you can get points against a team this good, you need to. His message, without me even asking him, he said he told the team, this is the best half of football you've played in all phases. You've put yourself in position to win this game. Be disciplined, play with grit, and execute. No drop-off. This game is ours to win. Well, they're in a good spot, up 8 nothing, and they've played well. Third and four for the pack. Rodgers flushed out of the pocket, stands in, and delivers a good ball. It's caught by Watson. Christian Watson has his second catch of the day, and he's slow to get up now. 18 yards on the hookup. Yeah, they're going to send Christian Watson out. He took a big hit, but this is a nice route. Little in-breaking route. First time we've seen him be used, not just running vertical. You can see here at the end of the play, takes a big hit coming from your left side of the screen. Bang. Looks like that ball kind of came loose, but you saw the official. He sent Christian Watson to the sideline, so he's going to get checked out. Yeah, he was in the concussion protocol, uh, too, so he had to clear that, which he did. And he's been banged up. He missed three games, hamstring issues. He had knee surgery before camp. A big catch there. A little flip to Jones. Tries to go. Oh, my goodness. What a play. He tried to get outside and just had no chance as Jerry Jacobs read it all the way. Yeah, you see Jerry Jacobs, you mentioned. Will Harris, he came on like a little nickel pressure off the slot. They just don't have enough guys to block all of them. Very timely pressure there by this Lions defense right into the heart of that play. Told that David Bakhtiari is questionable with a knee injury. And now Watson goes to the tent to be checked. It's been an infirmary for Green Bay here today. Four man rush. Rodgers going to get it out in the flat to Jones. Aaron Jones turns on the speed, but is cut off as he tries to turn the corner by Barnes. Think about the Lions and what they were coming into today. They had all kinds of problems. They were last in the league, right? No turnovers, giving up points, 32 of them per game, and they allowed touchdowns at an alarming rate. Today, no points, two interceptions off a guy who never throws them, and two red zone interceptions. Aaron Glenn's guys have come to play. Showing pressure here. Multiple guys walked up. See what Aaron Glenn has in store. Backs off a blitz. Four-man rush on third and long. Rodgers going long. Down the field. Knocked away at the last second. Kirby Joseph. He had two, Ray, I think. But Joseph made a terrific play. Really nice design. Kirby Joseph, he's one of those guys we circled pre-snap at the line of scrimmage. He's got to get all the way down the middle of the field. Rodgers' ball just a little underthrown to Toure. You can see Rodgers just a little disappointed at the end. He knew he had to put more on that ball, but what a play. O'Donnell punched it away, and the Lions will start inside their own 15. Kirby Rodgers or Kirby Joseph, I should say, has an interception. He's got that batted ball to save a touchdown, and Aaron Rodgers is more than, more than upset. I just want everyone to appreciate the job Kirby Joseph does. He's in the blitz look. He's going to carry Toure, the wide receiver, all the way down the middle of the field. I mean, to show pressure and be in the line of scrimmage and then be able to get back to the five-yard line on an inside seam and be the one that breaks the pass up. That's a pretty remarkable play by the rookie. Yeah, these young guys making plays. Here's Goff. Khalif Raymond is a nice tackle there. Adrian Amos came up from the safety spot. I mean, that's outstanding when you just show us how far he had to run. And Aaron Rodgers, we've shown him being frustrated. I don't know that I've ever seen him like that. No, it's just his expectations are for everyone around him, including himself, right? He, he's not saying he's he's out of this picture as far as could play better, but it's just used to a better product than what we're seeing. Jackson on the rush. And Jackson surging forward for Kenny Clark stopped him. 
Oh, yeah, he's had a couple that he'd like to have back today, no question about it. And here is for the Lions, right? Second half offense, it's hard to believe. They haven't scored in three games, and they've turned it over five times. It's funny, everything we said about coming out of half for Green Bay, about finding their way, and this is a you know second half for the rest of the season, you could really just reverse the teams and say the same thing about Detroit, specifically on offense. The second half offenses, as you saw in that graphic, the last three weeks have been beyond poor. Goff in trouble, and he is sacked. Kingsley Inagbari came in and out penalty at the end of this thing. Be his third sack of the year. Let's see if it holds up. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Defense number 90. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. You see Inagbari come around this left side. Yeah, you see his right hand. He catches Goff with kind of a club right here to the right side of his helmet. Oh. Kind of pulls his helmet back. It's a tough play for the defense. I understand by the letter of the law, that's that's a penalty. That's just a tough play. You're going to reach for a quarterback looking to bail out, out the back side of the pocket, just happen to club him on the side of the helmet. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. That's you, a tough pe That's a tough one. But that is it's the, it's, the it's right a call. Absolutely. It's the right call. It's just... You're Enag Barry, you're saying, I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do there. Lions go jumbo formation again, and that's Dan Skipper, the tackle in motion. And they're going to fake. Goff has time on low. Oh, it's intercepted. Alexander's got it. Jair Alexander cutting back. He's got blocking. Alexander still going and inside the 25. Maybe the spark the Packers needed. Jair Alexander, the interception is third of the year. Jared Goff just never saw Jair Alexander. It looks like Amon St. Brown is wide open. But when he's looking off the receiver to the left, Goff comes back late. And he just never sees him. That's a veteran play, just kind of baiting the quarterback to throw that crossing route. Well, we talked, someone's got to step up and make a play. You heard Aaron. Say it at halftime, Matt LaFleur said somebody's got to step up. Well, Jair Alexander, the highest paid corner in the league, just stepped up and made a play. Yeah, I thought he was going to score. At 29-yard return, he had some blocks, but he set up the Packers' offense in great field position at the 23. Dylan, and nowhere, absolutely nowhere, McNeil is there. Meanwhile, Christian Watson... You feel for the rookie wide out. He made that big catch on third down before, got checked out. He's gone back to the locker room. He just can't stay on the field. And a day that obviously Cobb not playing. Dobbs went out already earlier with an injury on the first play as there's Alexander celebrating. Feels like just a familiar theme. Packers without this guy, without this guy. Their wide receiver group has been all over the place injury-wise. Second and ten here. Pressure. Roger steps away. Throws. It's intercepted again. It's Joseph again. Kirby Joseph having the game of his season here today. He's got two off Rodgers. He's trying to throw this ball to the inside right here to Robert Tunyon. And Joseph just cuts right in front of it. You said he's having the game of his season, the game of his life. Two picks for the rookie Joseph, and the Lions take over up eight. Well, the injuries continue to mount for Green Bay, as that's for Sean Gary, their star pass rusher, now leaving on a cart. I mean, so many injuries today, and now Gary to the list, and you hope he's okay. What isn't okay is the Packers' offense. Aaron Rodgers has thrown three interceptions. There are seasons that he throws three. He's thrown three today, two of them to the rookie Kirby Joseph. And now here's Detroit with Goff. Goff going far side, and that's almost intercepted by Savage. So let's go back to the interception, the second one from Joseph. And what a great job by Joseph. They're going to try to run Tunyon on what they call a bender. Lazard's going to run a corner to put all the pressure right there on that safety, Kirby Joseph. 
But watch, he stays inside, reads Roger's eyes, and then he just undercuts that route. That's as well played, especially for a rookie. I mean, that is incredible poise, understanding what they're trying to do to threaten you. Stay in your responsibility and just break on the ball. Run it here, and Williams runs right into Dean Lowry, who swallowed him up. Devontae Wyatt gave some help inside as well and brings up third down. And for all the struggles of the offense, Green Bay's defense has played really well today. That's kind of getting lost in this. Absolutely. And, and coming into this game, there was a lot of questions about, was this defense compatible with the style of offense? Meaning in years past, teams would come in and say, hey, we got to beat Green Bay. We got to score 30. So what do you do? You throw, you pass. That's kind of what they've built this defense. They've been susceptible to the run. Today, run and pass, they've really played well. Third and 12. Four-man rush. Goff steps up, throws, and that is incomplete. And that could have been picked. Every pass is like an adventure in this second half. <laughs> there, there has been more batted balls that makes everyone in the stadium on both sides hold their breath in this game. Looked like he got away with one there. He kind of wrapped his hands around his back. Nixon did. Just kind of pulled the receiver, but... Nice stand there after the sudden change. Mm. Anytime there's a turnover and the other side of the ball is to run out there, it's a good stop. Jack Fox to punt it from his own end zone. High spiraling kick. Rodgers has it with a fair catch up at the 46. 8.15 to go in this third quarter. Rodgers in the offense will try it again. Down eight in Detroit. I think that their defense, which came in 32nd in the league, that rookie, Kirby Joseph, third-round draft pick out of Illinois. He only became a full-time starter in college last year, but he was a playmaker. Five interceptions, three fumble recoveries. He switched to wide receiver in college, but they said, you know what? Let's turn you back into a safety. He's got two interceptions and a batted ball to save a touchdown against Aaron Rodgers today. The kid has been off the charts. Seems like a pretty good decision. Whoever, whoever made that call, it seems... The early dividends of that decision to move him back to defense are paying off. So now Rodgers, three interceptions for the first time since 2017, as we just showed you. Down eight. They will get it to Aaron Jones, and he goes nowhere. Maybe a yard if he's lucky. So many injuries, Aaron Andrews. What do you got down there? Wow. I mean, it was the conversation coming into this game, Kevin. Of course, you see David Bakhtiari there on the bike trying to loosen up. We just wanted to put this graphic together and kind of get everybody up to date on what is going on. Offense, defense, they've seen it today. Still waiting on some outcomes with some guys. But, yeah, this team is hurting. Oh, my goodness. I mean, look at that list that we just showed while Aaron's doing a report. Bakhtiari, the all-pro tackle not in there. So Zach Tom is in there. At left guard, I uh, left tackle number 50. Rodgers near side, good throw and catch, and a completion for a first down. It's Lazard who comes back to get it, his third catch today, and that'll move the chains. Just a nice, simple two man concept working here at the bottom of the field. Sammy Watkins releases, runs that corner off. Alan Lazard just being friendly. You mentioned Tom here. Gets a little help from Elton Jenkins, takes his guy to the ground. That's going to be something to keep an eye on, especially if they have to get past Happy here in the second half to get something going. Just see how well they hold up there with David Bakhtiari out. Jones running away from pressure. And he's not going to get outside. Mike Hughes raced him down, but Aleem McNeil really made that play up the middle. Well, reminder to start Saturday strong with big noon Saturday on Fox at the playoffs. Fast approaching C.J. Stroud leads second-ranked Ohio State into a Big Ten battle with Indiana. All starts big noon kickoff live from the Horseshoe at 10 Eastern. And then it's Indiana-Ohio State at noon on Fox. And now Kirby Joseph, who we just showed and told you, has had an unbelievable day is down with an injury. Only hope he's okay. He's turning into a star today. They'll tend to Joseph and we'll take a break. 
an unspecified injury. How about this? Fourth player ever with two interceptions against Aaron Rodgers in a single game. So they want him back on the field. Of note, Malcolm Rodriguez, who got hurt with an elbow early in the game, came back in originally. He hasn't played in the second half. Derek Barnes and Alex Anzalone morning manning the linebacker spot. Second and eight for the Packers. Blitz is coming. Rodgers floats one out, and it's incomplete for Dylan in a third and eight coming up. Nice little change up there by Aaron Glenn. Two guys you just mentioned, Anzalone and Barnes, just hit it hard. Oh, they're going fast tempo here. Yeah, going good. fast tempo to try to keep them keep him from subbing on this third down. Yeah, we just showed you Aaron Jones now being worked on the sideline too. So all kinds of things going on. Third and eight Packers. Yeah, the Lions started to make their third down subs, KB. Rogers saw it, but he didn't think he could take advantage of 12 men. Kirby Joseph back in the game at safety too. Play clock winding down. They get it off. Rogers. Steps up, looking to run, they're going to run, he's going to be short. And there's a penalty flag on the opposite end of the field in the secondary. Now Aaron Jones is going to leave the field. I'll tell you, for an 8 nothing game, this game is wild. Wow, there is, <laughs> there is a lot going on. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Illegal hands to the face, defense number 25. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's on Will Harris, the cornerback. Yeah, you see him right there on Lazard in the slot. Kind of just goes a little high on the jam and catches the bottom of his face mask. Obviously, Harris doesn't love the call, but definitely caught him in the face there. Harris getting extended time today for Oru Warrior, who's struggled a little bit in the secondary. All right, so after the penalty, first down Green Bay. Now we get a timeout on the field. So on that last play, I, I think this is going to be one of the Lions defenders. They might make walk off the field. Let's take a look. Yep. So on the end of that play, when Rogers slid, the two Lions guys collided hard. Yeah, Julian Oguara. Yeah, Oguara seems like it's being who they're walking off. Let's we'll take a look here at the end. You're going to see Oguara. He's coming in behind. See him take that hit right to the face. That's the guy they removed. So obviously that came from upstairs just to make sure he's okay. Yeah, so the spotter checks in on the hit. They'll just check him out. That was Jeff Okuda who ran in him. Aaron Jones, we're told now, has a ankle injury and he's questionable return. Here's Rodgers standing in and delivering to Tunyon over the middle. It's his first catch of the day. Gets down to the 20. And it'll be second down and short. Well, Aaron Rodgers had a tough day today. This one, a little bad luck. Would have been a touchdown off of Barnes' helmet. And then a beautiful read and interception by Aiden Hutchinson. And then Kirby Joseph has been outstanding. He saved the touchdown there. He's picked off Rodgers twice. And there's just a gem reading that play all day. A rare three interception day for Rodgers. Hasn't had one since 2017, but yet it's a one possession game here in Detroit. Second and three on the fake. Rodgers going for the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. Alan Lazard. Every time he's needed a play today in the passing game, he's gone to Alan Lazard. Great scheme. You see him holding his hand a little bit. We'll check back. Look, the short motion. It makes everyone think he's coming down to support the run. He flashes the safety, and now it's just one-on-one -on, -one on the corner. Looks like they're now going to obviously go for two. Great play design. Great job by Lazard to sell that that was going to be a run front side. Just enough to get behind Okuda. Yeah, no. Rodgers took that shot, too, from Pascal. And he's been playing with a thumb injury since that giant game in London. Wore tape last week. Not wearing it this week, but it's, it's bothering him. Yeah, he got up on that last play grimacing pretty good. But So here's the two-point try. Try and tie it up for Green Bay.
On the move, looking Lazard again. It's knocked away by Okuda. Incomplete. Okuda, these last couple plays, he's going everywhere Lazard goes. He got beat on the touchdown. Play corner in this league. You better have a really short memory. Comes back, challenges him on this little flat route. I think even if he caught it, he was going to be short. See on the touchdown throw, Rodgers takes the big hit. Kind of comes up holding that right hand. You mentioned his thumb. Keep an eye on that the rest of this second half. Yeah, and he's kind of raced himself with that going down. I mean, Rodgers is tough, man. He, he plays, he's played through a lot. He's played through bone bruises in his knees. He, he's played hurt quite a bit. And he won't say it's bothering, but you know it's obviously bothering right now. You see, they maybe put a little tape on it, try to help it structurally. I'll tell you what, for a game that has had two total scores, it's been a lot of fun. And the Lions make a stop on the two, so their two point lead here with 4.53 to go in the third. It's Jackson on the return and has a little seam and gets his way up to the 30. Well, this week, how about Coach Greg Olson in the Charlotte Pop Warner Football City Championship and your son Tate? How do we do, Coach? I'll tell you, man, this was a very stressful evening. We won. It was awesome. These kids, you see Luke Keekley, he's my defensive coordinator. I have, an, I have an unlimited budget, just so you know. That's my son right there. We won 21 0. It was. Uh, it was a special night. My dad, he coaches oh, with hey, us. Going this oh, way. We're going to go this way. I right? turned the wrong okay. way. It was going this way. Yeah, my dad's our offensive coordinator. Luke Keekley's our defensive coordinator. I just run around and bother everybody, but it's a, it's a blast. Here's Goff on the fake. Has some pressure and throws incomplete for St. Saint, for Saint Brown. So, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to stay looking straight ahead. <laughs> and here's my question. Um, your defensive coordinator for 11-year-old football is Luke Keekley, one of I, the greatest linebackers to ever play? I have an unlimited budget, KB. <laughs> our, our team, we fundraise a lot. I can hire any coach I want in the country. I chose Luke after a bunch of interviews. But, no, I'll tell you how it happened. Last, last summer, I was talking to Luke. I said, hey, I think my son's going to play tackle football for the first time. He's like, well, can I come coach? I was like, yeah, of course. So it's fifth and sixth grade football. It's an absolute blast. And we get a whistle. Looks like this is going to be moving back five yards. Full start, offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, the reason we show that, have a little fun, but also to tell you that Fox Sports proudly supports the Thanks Coach campaign with the Up To Us Sports to recognize the important role coaches play in the lives of our youth on and off the field. Post on social media thanking a coach who positively impacted your life using hashtag Thanks Coach. For more info, up the number two us.org. And I know you have someone who you'd like to thank, too. Here's Goff. Stands in, pressure delivers, maybe hit as he throws, it's incomplete, third and long coming up. Yeah, I mentioned my dad's the offensive coordinator for our little Pop Warner team, but he was also me and my brother's high school football coach. He coached almost 40 years, high school football, public school up in New Jersey. You used to call our games in I the did. playoffs. I did. As a young up-and-coming broadcaster, so high school coaches make an incredible impact on young kids' lives. I was fortunate that my coach happened to also be my father, but... He Every made an impact on my life as a broadcaster. We used to have production meetings with him. That was, those were my first production meetings it's as a kid out of college. It's pretty cool full circle, isn't it? Yep, sure is. Third and 15 for the Lions. Goff throwing near side. Incomplete. Raymond, the intended receiver. Multiple flags on this play, though. Prior to the pass, holding, defense, number 25. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Keyshawn Nixon. Remember, he's playing because Eric Stokes got hurt in the first half. Yeah, you can see Nixon. He's guarding Tom Kennedy, number 85. Nixon kind of just falls back and just pulls Kennedy kind of over the top of him. Pretty critical penalty there. It's, these last couple plays, the Lions really haven't had much to work with. Got yeah. bailed out. Yeah, Lions only have 156 yards of offense. We told you how explosive they had been to start the game. Here's Jamal Williams. And the Packers defense is doing a really nice job. 
And it's interesting because you talked a little bit about how their defense, you know, people expect them to be dominant. They, they were built for their offense scoring 30 points a game. Well, now they're not, so they've had to play it differently. Yeah, built making the other team chase 30 points, assuming because that's what we're so accustomed to Rodgers and this offense scoring in years past, but also playing with a lead. Right, where teams, you don't have to worry about defending the run. You can build yourself from coverage down. Rush the passer and defend the pass. Williams. And surging forward, and he should have enough for a first down. We'll see where the spot is. We'll just think back to the preseason. So much expected. Some of the headlines about this Green Bay defense, which was excellent last year, shows overwhelming power at training camp. That was one headline. Defense should be dominant in 2022. And, and then you talked about this, how... Packers defense could get them to the Super Bowl. They're very good, but when they have to do the whole thing, it's a lot harder. Yeah, it's just a different style. Right now, in the NFL, you want to build your defense to complement your strengths and play off the weaknesses of your offense. And that's what they've done so well, especially last year. But it's a little bit of a changing right now, a little shift in philosophy. Third and one, Jamal Williams going to pick it up. That's enough for a first down for Detroit. And then the question is, will they be able to adapt? Because you don't see a world where all of a sudden Green Bay is going to score 35 a game. This is probably how they're going to play this year, right? And now they're going to go quick. Try to catch the Packers off guard a little bit here. Stay with the run game. Williams right up the middle. It's a big hole. Jamal Williams for the first down into Green Bay territory. The ball came out at the end, but they say he was down. A 13-yard run, that's the longest of the day. At the top of the show, we talked about this offensive line group. Watch the push they get inside. I mean, there is just a just a surge with the offensive line pushing this Green Bay defense back. They stay with Temple. They stay with Williams left side. And he's going to get about three and a half, four on that carry. For Garvin brought him down. We've talked a lot about the adjustments and, the, you know, kind of some of the changes Green Bay is going through. This week, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. Josh Reynolds, of course, one of their top receivers. He got injured this week in practice. Remember, TJ Hawkinson was their leading receiver. A lot of reception production, a lot of explosive plays in this run play action style offense that Goff directs. So there's going to be some little bit of an adjustment now to who fills that void. And we can see their production today in the past game being a little down. Six straight runs now for the Lions. Williams again. And gets up to the 41. And it'll bring up third down. Trying to stay with that run game without Hawkinson, without Reynolds, as you mentioned. Well, so far, 97 yards on the ground, averaging four yards a play. And, you know, they're trying to do something they haven't done. Finish a game. They've been in every game. Can they finish it? Third and five. Goff over the middle. Caught! Amon Ross St. Brown turns the corner inside the 20. And a big gain to Amon Ross St. Brown for the Lions on third down. He's got 25. Lions go quickly here. Justin Jackson right the gun and Jackson's got a first and goal some momentum for the Lions offense I love this third down concept this motion builds a little three-man concept you got to sit an in break another in break nice job by Goff seeing Amor Ross St. Brown just kind of clear that zone window puts it right on his chest I love this drive little tempo you can see the defensive lineman on Green Bay kind of taking their knee between snaps they're tired it's been an impressive drive run and now a couple couple good conversions in the passing game first and goal run it again and Williams gonna dive his way down to the two as that will take us to the end of this third quarter from Detroit the Lions with an 8-6 lead and looking for more from Motown We welcome you back to Detroit. We start this fourth quarter. 8-6 Lions. They've had a heck of a drive coming. This is the 12th play of it. Up 8-6. And a second and goal from the three. A lot of Jamal Williams and then a huge third down conversion to Amon Ross St. Brown.
bring on the jumbo formation again. They've done it a bunch in this second half, and especially on this drive, it's worked. Eight rushes on this drive. On the fake. Goff looking, just throws it away. Had no one. Jonathan Garvin had some pressure. Raymond, the receiver, near, but not open. So third and goal. This was really well defended. They're going to try to slip the fullback out into the flat. Really nice job there by Adrian Amos to kind of come with them. And then you mentioned Garvin getting that hit, making Goff kind of just throw that ball at the back of the end zone to set up this third down. Goff going quick. Looking. First read not there. Going end zone. Caught for the touchdown. James Mitchell, the rookie tight end, has his first. And rookie tight ends are just having their coming out party today, KB. I'm just saying. Take a look right here. You're going to see Mitchell. He's just going to stay alive. And for whatever reason, Green Bay just drops him. They're playing zone coverage. Mitchell just kind of finds that back end line. Great job by Goff going through his complete progression. Mitchell's probably his third option on that play. Great protection by the offensive line and a great job by Goff going through his progression. And that's a big kick because it's a two possession game. So how about this on a week they trade TJ Hawkinson, their leading receiver at tight end. They've had two young tight ends get their first career touchdown pass today. Lions up two possessions, 15-6. You rule. Well, we have Greg Olson in the booth, so National Tight Ends Day is every week. It's truly amazing. Two guys catching their first NFL scores today. First, the rookie Mitchell earlier. It was Shane Zilstra. as a heck of a drive by the Lions. 13 plays, and they finish it off. And now up 15-6 in this game. Today's next-gen stats powered by AWS. It's one that Olsen just loves. I told you this is a great play. You want to score touchdowns, just throw the ball. I mean, he couldn't be more wide open. The fact that 14% of the time that ball is not completed is quite interesting, but just shows you that play is really hard to defend. It's every tight end's dream. I told you when they called it, man, I caught a lot of balls on that exact scheme. What do you think happens on the 14%? Do guys just fall down or like that's... You get sacked, I guess. I guess it builds in like sack probability coverage I, I'm not exactly sure on that one but all I know is it's a touchdown we're gonna find out a lot about the Packers right now gonna run it first to Dylan that's because Aaron Jones is not in there right Aaron Andrews here's your update on Aaron Jones we saw him earlier in the game run to the locker room and he came back out obviously that's him standing on the sidelines. He ran out of that locker room. There's been no update to his injury. Greg, you said it perfectly. That face kind of says it all. He looks like he got news he didn't want. But mm. yeah, they're still saying questionable with an ankle. It's amazing. Eight Packers have gotten hurt today. Rodgers can't find anyone. Pressure stays alive. Rodgers throws and it's caught. How in the world did he make that happen? And it's Tunyon. And now the Lions kind of ran into each other. It's Joseph and Okuda, and they're down. He's running around forever back there. You mentioned it. These two Lions defenders came oh. in hard at each other. Just... Injury timeout here in Detroit. At least walking under his own power, but took a vicious hit from Jeff Okuda, his own teammate, as they tried to converge on the tackle from Robert Tunyon. He's had such a splendid game. Two interceptions off Aaron Rodgers, and we hope he's okay. So C.J. Moore, fourth-year player, number 38, comes in in the secondary for him. Meanwhile, first and ten Packers down nine points here in the fourth quarter. Rodgers. DeGuara and DeGuara up to the 45 for the other safety Elliott makes the tackle by the way Okuda has gone in the locker room too after that tackle I mean the injuries in this game are absurd it's almost like who's got enough guys to get on the field in this game to close it off and 
Jerry Jacobs in a corner for Okuda. Second down, blitz coming. Rodgers gets rid of it quickly, gets out to Amari Rodgers. He's going to be short of a first down. There's a penalty flag from the secondary. I think they're going to call them. That's a design little pass. I think they blocked too pass early. Offense, yep. number 83. Senior penalty, second down. That's on Samori Toure, the rookie out of Nebraska. Yeah, so with press coverage, you just got to be a little careful. You don't block down the field, and you don't block before the ball is caught. So different than college football. In college football, if the ball's thrown at or behind the line of scrimmage, you can go block anytime. Different in the NFL. So some of these on-the-ball kind of quick smoke screens and whatnot, there's a clock that has to go off in your head as the receiver. You can't start blocking downfield until that ball is possessed. You can obviously tell Toure was a little early. Boy, Aaron Jones looks like he's just dying to get back in the field. Not happening, though. Second and 17 after the flag. Four-man rush. Pressure coming from Hutchinson. Rodgers running for his life. Throws on the run, and it's incomplete. Thought he had that one. Toure was there, slid, but couldn't haul it in. And it's third and long. That's kind of that's symbolic of their entire day just slightly off. You're going to see Toure. He's running up the seam on the left. Now, this is just all scramble drill. He's just staying in phase with Rodgers. Rodgers buys time. We've seen him make these throws a million times, and it just skips. Just misses. Kind of, kind of the story of the day. Rodgers can't find anyone. Looking, looking, going to try and run it himself. Rodgers is going to get close and going to get there. Holy cow, on third and 17, and Aaron Rodgers' scramble picks up the first down, and now they're going to go quick. What a play. I'd love to see where that pump fake was. All right, now they're going to get back and huddle. They couldn't get the personnel. Rodgers was trying to go fast there, KB, as you mentioned. I want to see where he was when he made this pump fake. It looked to me like he was about 10 yards down the field, but the Lions defenders fell for it. What a play when his team needed it the most, using his legs. That was pretty cool. Just like that, Aaron Rodgers is the leading rusher on the day for Green Bay. <laughs> what a wild afternoon. On third and 17, they pick it up, and now it's Dylan to the right side. Dylan, it's just been a struggle getting the run game going. We've seen this a few times now. Anytime the Lions have gone two high safeties, just look underneath. There's no one in the middle of the field. Now you're relying on your four pass rushers to contain the quarterback. There's the pump fake we referenced. Not quite sure where he is. Obviously, it doesn't matter. And it's a missed opportunity for this Lions defense to get off the field on third and long. Dylan, big hole for Dylan. Puts his shoulder down. He's got a first down as he runs over Elliott. Yeah, really nice light box here. Watch him finish this run. Elliott comes up, tries to deliver the funk, but I'll tell you, AJ Dylan, that's a hard, that's a hard tackle. Rodgers was not ready for the snap. Josh Myers, the center, he snapped it early. Thankfully, Rodgers reacted to it, but that snap was definitely. A surprise to Aaron Rodgers. On the fake. Has time. Still looking around. Comes underneath and has a completion. DeGuara makes the catch. And Josiah DeGuara. Back up tight end. will haul it in. As Rodgers has had some time and he's buying more with his feet too absolutely i think we got to give credit to this packers offensive line when we mentioned zach tom he's at left tackle now he earlier in the game he played right guard when tunyon when uh runyon came out they have given rogers a lot of time to make second moves to kind of go second reaction 
Rodgers has made him pay. Greg, we saw at number one, Jeff Okuda is back in for the Lions. So still no Kirby Joseph, but Okuda, who was involved in that collision, back in there right now. Kylan Hill in the game of running back for the first time. He gets to carry, and Hill right up the middle. So how about that? Hill, who's making his season debut. He was on the pup list all year with a knee injury. Had an ACL last year. He gets a carry in the fourth quarter. Now we get an injury timeout. It's Aleem McNeil. Slow to get up. So without the services of Aaron Jones, Kylan Hill getting involved. Seventh round draft pick last year. I think at this point with all the injured bodies and the offense struggling They're just looking for anybody to make a play. Yeah, every guy who's got a helmet today. He's he's up. He's live The way this game has gone really for both teams. It's I Mean that picture says it all right Randall Cobb and Aaron Jones. They're on the sidelines. It's crazy Tenth play of this drive the Packers have had some really lengthy drives today They've been unable to capitalize on those. First and ten. Rodgers, quick throw to Guara again. Penalty flag as he slips inside the 20. Are they going to call the same thing again that he blocked early? It's kind of where the flag was thrown, but... Obviously, Rodgers is arguing it. This time, it was Alan Lazard. He was the... Pass interference. Offense, number 13. 10 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, so watch the timing of this. You're going to see Lazard at the top of the screen. You heard Rodgers say he's running a route. So what they teach you in that situation, Kev, is when you have press coverage, you've got to make your release by some time that even if there is contact, it looks like you're running a route through contact. The second you just engage, head up with a guy and lock your hands in, now you've given that posture of making a block. He's got to do a better job just selling and running that man defender off and then lock up with him further down the field. Obviously, the floor is trying to argue their case as well. Makes it a first and 20. Rodgers, some pressure, just going to throw it away. Toure was in the mix, but incomplete. Another game break. Let's go back to Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Commander's up 10-7 over the 6-1 Vikings. Ty Taylor Heineke, excuse me, connects with Dax Milne for the six-yard score. Vikings would add a field goal. Commander's lead by seven. Kevin? You know, Commander's, if they win, are going to be 5-4. and four. That's a heck of a job by your former head coach, Ron Rivera. They're relevant. No question. When we were there, when they played Dallas first couple of weeks of the season, and it didn't look good, but give credit to Ron and that staff. They've got Washington playing a lot better. With Taylor Heineke. All he does is win. Second and 20. Rodgers going for it all. Incomplete. Toure again the intended receiver, and we get a penalty flag in the secondary. Toure thinks he was held. Jerry Jacobs was there on the coverage. Let's see. I think that's who they're going to call it on. I think he tugged him. You can see him lined up right here in the slot. Pass interference. Defense, number 39. Ball replaced at the spot of foul. Automatic first round. Yeah, and it's, it's less the grab, right? It's less the grab, and it's more the restriction. Yeah. You could clearly say Toure just couldn't quite accelerate on that route as he was being held back by Jacobs. Seen kind of both teams kind of alternate penalties. Eight oh four to go. Quick throw, Rodgers again. Two Ray makes the catch, but is wrestled down after a short gain. Will Harris with a nice tackle. Rodgers has targeted 11 different Packers today, and part of that is just trying to find a playmaker. The other part is everybody's hurt. Absolutely, and something you said earlier I think is such a, an important point to point out. So Their drives have to be so long, right? You mentioned 12 plate drives. This drive over 10. 
it just makes your margin for error so small. They don't have the explosive one-play score, one-play chunk play. And all of a sudden, you're one penalty, one negative play, as we've seen a turnover from these sustained drives coming to an end. Second down. Rodgers over the middle, and Tunyon comes down with it. But not enough for a first. It'll be a third down and short. Be curious how Matt LaFleur views this. Is this is this four down territory for them? Depending on how this third down, third and three, depending on how this goes, does he keep his offense out there, try to take advantage, or does he just take the field goal, make it a one-score game? A lot will be dictated by how, what the result of this play is, of course. Third down, Rodgers on the slant, inside, incomplete. Tried to get it to Sammy Watkins, and now you got to make a decision. Yeah, they didn't gain any yards. If they could have made that a fourth and short, a fourth and yard, I think they would have had a decision. But now you don't want to attempt fourth and three. You see Sammy Watkins just going on a quick dart, it's just a one-step slant. Ball's a little low. I think even if he caught it, I still think he was going to be short, but... If he hangs on, at least it makes it a decision for Matt LaFleur. Fourth and three. Now this this is obviously a chance to just take the field goal and make it a one-score game. Try it from 25. And Mason Crosby is perfect. So it is that one-score game. Six-point Lions lead with 6.36 to play. Well, the Lions are honoring service members and military families this week. The team invited them to attend yesterday's walkthrough practice at their training facility. Families watched practice, met with the players afterward, taking photos, sharing stories. Lions players, including Jared Goff, wearing helmet decals with the initials of the family's fallen loved ones today. It's well done. You see on Goff's helmet. So. 6.36 to go. So fascinating here. The Packers frustrated on offense all day, but within one score. The Lions, their story all year, they're always in these games. They just can't finish them. So one of them has to come true here. Absolutely. And right now, if you're the Lions, you cannot go conservative. You cannot say, oh, we're going to start bleeding the clock. we got a six-point lead. No. Green Bay just went the length of the field. You held them, but you've got to stay in it. You've got to be aggressive, push the ball down the field. Got to try to extend this here, get at least the field goal to extend this, because you give ball back to Aaron Rodgers down six. We've seen him do that a million times. Short kick. Jackson to take it. And across the 20. So the Lions have definitely had trouble finishing, haven't they, Tom Rinaldi? They have, Kevin. As we know, losing is hard, but losing after you lead, that's harder. The Lions have lost halftime leads in two of their last three. Dan Campbell said the problem hasn't been adjustments. It's been self-inflicted, and that was echoed by Jared Goff, saying, for the most part, the frustrating part is it's the mistakes we made. It isn't like defenses are coming out and catching us off guard. The good news, they did score some points for the first time in a month in the second half, but this is the test. Can they finish against this opponent? About to find out. Jackson is the running back. He will get it. Left side has a seam. Jackson cuts back across the 30. There's a penalty flag. This may be coming back. And yeah, that's exactly what you can't have as you talk about. Holding. Offense, number 89. 10-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, right on cue of Tom's report. That's it right there. You got the ball trying to run the clock out. You're going to see right here on the end of the line. Just that left hand. Brock Wright just kind of pulls his jersey off. But now you find yourself way backed up. You find yourself in first and 20. It's exactly what Tom's talking about. These self-inflicted negatives that put them behind the chains and just alter the play calling of Ben Johnson. Yeah, seventh penalty on Detroit. Four-man rush. Goff over the middle, and that was dangerous. Rasul Douglas had a beat on it. Looking for Tom Kennedy. See Goff's numbers today, just 11 of 22, 116 yards. 
Ben Johnson needs to have a play here, you know, whether it's a quick screen or some run after catch or whether you feel comfortable about your drop back game. Goff's got to be thinking, get half the yards back. Get us into a third and ten or minus and at least give us a chance to convert. Blitz coming late. Picked up. Goff over the middle and across the 20. Has a completion. There is Swift. And we get a penalty. Chris Barnes is down for Green Bay. And you see Chris Barnes, he hits Swift Personal right in the foul. side of the head. Unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 51. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, and after that, Barnes slow to get up as they care for him. And meanwhile, the Lions have a penalty. Let's talk about their mistake. And then there's a mistake to give it right back from Green Bay. A chance to face a, to force a third and long. Barnes is coming in there trying to be aggressive. He, unfortunately for him, he kind of took the, he took the brunt of that hit. He was real slow getting to his feet before the trainers were able to get out and tend to him. It's good to see him be able to walk off the field, but he was definitely, uh, he was definitely pretty shaken there after that hit. Tell you one thing, you talked about the Lions penalties. That's the eighth on Green Bay, and they've had some bad ones today. Like, they, they bad have. timing. Absolutely. Sometimes the difference of the game is, you know, in the NFL, is not so much who makes the most plays, it's who makes the right play at the right moment. And that can be both in the positive and the negative. And just seen time and time again, Green Bay has been on the wrong side of those critical plays. First and ten, Jamal Williams running it against his former mates. Not much there, if anything. Jaron Reed was there on the stop. Hey, next Sunday on Fox, NFL doubleheader starts. Vikings taking on the Bills. Then it's one of the games of the year. Talk about historic rivals. Cowboys and Packers at Lambeau. Mike McCarthy returns to Green Bay. A lot of emotions with that one. It's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. By the way, talk Vikings and Bills. We showed you the Washington score. Minnesota has tied up the Commanders now, and the Jets and Bills are tied late in that game. Good stuff going on. Second and nine. Goff, Raymond. Gets a block. Raymond has a seam and up near a first down. He's going to get to the 45, so it'll be a third and one. Really like that play design. High percentage. So you're not going to stop the clock with a with an incomplete pass. But the way they set it up, St. Brown goes in motion. That pulls the defender away. Really well blocked. You saw Kennedy on the outside pick up kind of two men. Well, I'll tell you what. Whatever your best third and short play is, you better have that thing dialed up because this... This could be the play of the game right here. On the fake, Goff going to throw it and going to complete it for a first down. It's Mitchell again, the rookie who had the touchdown earlier. A big conversion on third and one. Well, this was Ben Johnson's play. You see Mitchell, he starts over here. They use him in a little short motion. Not sure why Jair Alexander doesn't pick him up. He's the flat defender. Adrian Amos is behind him for the deep zone. Not sure why Alexander doesn't just pick him up out of the flat. That's his, that's his coverage. Third and short, you're the flat defender. Mitchell coming off an ACL surgery. Only has played 21 offensive snaps this year. He's got a touchdown on that huge conversion. Stay with the ground game here. Williams, Jamal Williams. Inside the 45, he's got six more. And Williams now up to 80 yards rushing on the day. And more importantly, the clock under four minutes to go. Yeah, so now this is where clock management starts coming into play. Both teams have three timeouts. Of course, the Lions here, they're playing for at least a field goal. Get yourself a reasonable field goal attempt. If you're Green Bay, it's pretty obvious what you have to do. You have to get a stop here at some point. Another first down, you're going to have to start using your timeouts. Try to extend this game as long as you can. Williams, right side, diving forward and close to a first down. Going to be about a yard short. Now, something really interesting, if you're Dan Campbell, and as we've seen, you mentioned no team goes for it on fourth down. This, is he telling Ben Johnson you have two downs to get this yard? I think, I almost think you have to. I think if I'm Dan Campbell, I'm giving my offensive coordinator 
I'm giving him two shots to pick up this yard. Because if you pick it up, this game's almost all but over. Green Bay needs one of these guys up front here for Green Bay. They, they need penetration. They need to get in the backfield. Just going to run it to Williams, and he's going to lose yardage. The Packers all over it, and Quay Walker, the rookie, blew up that play. All right on cue. They call this a linebacker run through. You're going to see Quay Walker. He's just going to hit this gap. He's unblocked. They're going to pull the tackle, and he just beats the down block. Now you force the fourth down, but it's definitely a lot better than fourth and short. What a great play. And they're going. Yeah, I... Because, right, if you kick a touchback, you only gain 20 net yards unless they try to make them jump off sides. Fourth and three. Goff back to throw. Pressure coming. Throws. Throw it incomplete. Intended for Amon Ross St. Brown. Pressure from Preston Smith. And the Packers get an enormous stand and a chance to win the game with two minutes to go. And the ball is going to be in the hands of Aaron Rodgers with the game on the line. It's been a good game, and for all the frustration for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers offense, who have struggled mightily today, the ball is in Aaron Rodgers' hands with two minutes to go and a chance to win the game. What more could you ask for? The NFL is a funny, funny world. Started off over the middle, has a completion there to DeGuara. Josiah DeGuara up to the 48. Rodgers of all three timeouts, so plenty of time for them, really. This is why in this league you just keep playing. Everything has seemed to be a disaster, right, for Green Bay today. But as you mentioned, they're a drive away from all that going away. Pressure up the middle. Rodgers looking, throwing incomplete. Try to get Dylan released on Anzalone. By the way, we just showed you David Bakhtiari, who hasn't played the entire second half, is back in at left tackle on this drive. Which is interesting. I mean, obviously, when healthy, he's one of the best left tackles in all football, but he stood around for the last two quarters, in essence, and they obviously feel he's their best, whether he's injured or whatever the case may be, they obviously feel he gives them their best chance to protect Rodgers on this two-minute drive. And timeout here. Not sure why. It's loud, I'll tell you that. But why did they stop the play? Look like they're trying to reset the play clock, and the, now they're trying. Yeah, they're trying to reset the play yeah. clock now. But they're giving the they're giving Rogers a ton of time here to get in his right play. Looks like both teams are kind of changing up their call. Third down, Rodgers gets rid of it quickly, comes in the flat to Dillon, who breaks the tackle and lost the football. Now, where do they mark him? I think with the fumble, they're going to mark him. Did they mark him short? Did they say when he fumbled? Because, well, you can't fumble the ball forward and get the gain and get the yards. Well, it's inside two minutes. It's right. got to go back to this where right. he lost Go it. back to where he lost it, right. You can't advance the ball forward. And so right now they have the spot as, as being a first down. But right, but that ball should have come back unless they're saying if you recover your own fumble, you I mean this is pretty obvious. It's he's not he doesn't have the first down, right? I mean No, so if he covers his recovers his own fumble, that's okay. 
But let's see if was the Lions player out of bounds when it hits him? No. Maybe. And then if Dylan recovers his own fumble, that's different. This will be interesting to see how they sort all this out. Let's bring in Mike Pereira. Mike, you know, are, are we correct here that this has got to come back to where he lost the ball? Yeah, well, what you've got to take a look at, we're inside of two minutes, all right? So a fumble in advance, if it's recovered in advance by any other player than the fumbling player, it has to go back to the spot of the fumble. However, it's recovered by the fumbling player. Then you just have to look and see if the Lions player touched it when he was out of bounds and if it did then it's going to go back to the spot of the fumble that's what they're looking at at this point so that's the key that's why the mark is right now for a first down it looked i thought that it hit a lions player but maybe not yeah so it's pretty cut and dry obviously aj Dillon, he recovered his own fumble past the first down yard to gain without the ball or him going out of bounds so now the determination has to be when it hit the Lions player, was he inbounds or out of bounds? I'd like to welcome the new audience that joins us here in a review on an A.J. Dillon fumble. And it's been a wild game. Ton of injuries. Packers offense has struggled. They're down by six. Here's the play we're looking at. Did it hit him while he was out of bounds? If it did hit board while he's out of bounds, I think it did. I think it did. You see his right hand? Right look at there. His right, look at right there. You're right. He's clearly out of bounds. So that would mean, as Mike said, the ball would come. It would be Packers football, but it would not be a first down. It would be fourth down coming up. Correct. Correct. And then, obviously, if they determine he did not touch the ball while out of bounds, A.J. Dillon is allowed to recover his own fumble and gain the yards. But you could see where they marked it. They've obviously radioed in. It looks like this is going to be fourth down. Yeah, they've moved the ball back. Probably after looking at those replays that we provided. Those were great shots. What camera work on those replays there. That was awesome. We're going to reset this clock, according to Mike, to 122. But it's going to be fourth down. So it's going to be game on the line right here. For the new audience just joining us, it's been... Frustration for Aaron Rodgers and company all day. The Lions have played well defensively. But, man, Aaron Rodgers, three interceptions hardly ever happens, but still with a chance to win. And the Packers with eight players getting hurt today. It's been... After review, we have a fumble out of bounds. Please reset the game clock to 122. After that, there's a 10-second runoff, and the game clock will be reset to 112. 112 on the game clock. Thank you. So that's what we thought originally. Yep. They ruled on the field that Dylan was in. Obviously, they change it, and the game comes down to this. Rodgers, pressure, throwing, caught! Two rays got it on his back, and a first down. Now the ball comes loose at the end, still fighting for it. It is... What's the ruling? Lions are saying they have it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is unbelievable. Jeff Okuda, whose ball is it? The ruling on the field is that was a fumble out of bounds. Green Bay's ball, first down. So oh, they they're, say saying Green Bay. That he, they're saying he recovered it out of bounds, Kev. Let's take Time a look. Out. Let's Green see. The first of the oh, my oh, gosh. My God, it's that's so close. That is so close. Well, first of all, when he threw it, I didn't think anyone was even there to catch it. Watch this adjustment Toure makes. This ball is thrown so far to the inside. He had to make like a Willie Mays-style tackle, but then... The ball gets ripped out, and then the question is, here at the sideline... It is so close. Mike Pereira, ultra close. What do you see? Well, I think, first of all, they have to review to see if it's a fumble or not, and that ball is coming out before he's down, and then at the sideline, he doesn't have clear control when he recovers. When he rolls over on his side here, left shoulder down, 
And to me, is that control? Did he have clear control? That's what they're going to have to look at. Now, remember, on the field, they ruled that it's Green Bay's football. And you see Green Bay is going to come and snap the football here with Rodgers converting on that fourth down. Now going end zone, Lazard, and it's incomplete out of bounds. So obviously when they looked upstairs, they clearly thought that Okuda did not possess the ball cleanly before he touched. You heard Mike explain it so well. That ball kind of rolls over his left forearm. I mean, we never got a call on the field that said the call is upheld. So obviously, I guess yeah. it was. And then, of course, under two minutes, it's got to be a booth review. And they, well, didn't, they didn't see enough upstairs to stop the game and take a look at it. Crowd is booing. This is wild. 50 seconds ago, Packers down by six, second and ten. Rodgers again going to the corner. Nobody home. Lazard was kind of tangled up there with Jerry Jacobs in its third and ten. So Lazard, he's he's calling for P.I. I think this is a nice job here by Jacobs. Gets his head around at first. He, I don't know, he's kind of driving him out of bounds. That replay made it look like Jerry Jacobs just kind of had his head buried in his chest, running him out of bounds. Matt LaFleur is furious on that sideline. Live action, it looked like he played it well, but on that replay, I'm not so sure. LaFleur is furious. Rodgers over the middle, knocked away in the end zone. C.J. Moore, who came on with the injury to Kirby Joseph, makes it fourth and ten. Nice job here by Moore coming over the top, not grabbing the, grabbing him with his left hand, just using his inside arm to come across. It's a nice clean play. That left arm does not restrict him. Sets it up right here, fourth down. And play clock was winding down. Rogers signal for a timeout. And, and he gets the timeout. Here's a recap of this game. Okay, the, the Lions have been opportunistic on defense. They picked off Rodgers in the red zone twice. It never happens. It's a great play by Aiden Hutchinson there. Another rookie, Kirby Joseph, has two. And then two tight ends scoring the first touchdowns of their careers here today in a week they traded T.J. Hawkinson. But then the Packers coming back. Lazard with a 20-yard touchdown. Lions would answer. That was James Mitchell in the fourth quarter. Packers got a field goal after that to make it a six-point lead, and it comes down to this. A three-interception day for Aaron Rodgers, and the game on the line with a fourth and ten. Clocks at one. Get it off. Rodgers floats one. Incomplete. The Lions are going to win the game. see Watkins he's working in the slot kind of gets jammed and then this is a part I don't think Rodgers was expecting I think Rodgers expected once he started outside he was going to stay there he throws the ball out wide Watkins kind of readjusts his route and breaks towards the inside ball falls of course incomplete and so the Green Bay Packers are under Matt LaFleur have never lost more than four in a regular season are about to be on a five game losing streak and the Lions five game losing streak is going to end. They are going to finish. 
and get a big time win over their division rival 15 to 9. And fitting for Aaron Glenn's defense so much Malayan this year making the stand in the end. Lions with a big win. The Packers have lost five straight and we're back to Detroit to wrap it up. After this 15-9 final score, Lions get the W.